In this next group of videos, we're going to talk about backing up your databases in SQL Server 2005. Now, before we start, I want to do this one little video, and I know it's redundant. You've heard it a billion times and so forth, but still, I can't stress this enough. I don't know how many times I've seen companies get burned by their backup strategy. The first rule of the backup strategy is to have one. And your backup strategy shouldn't be that, yeah, we really ought to be backing this stuff up. Uh, I have seen companies, I worked with a company one time that one of the IT people was backing up SQL databases on a thumb drive. Okay, that was their plan. So make sure you have a good working strategy. Now, I will say this. Backing it up on a thumb drive was a better plan than not backing it up at all, knowing they needed to. But uh, you can probably find some more secure media. But um, So first of all, have a backup strategy. Now, this needs to be a specific person with specific responsibilities. If you wait for everybody to have time to do this, it'll never happen. How many things in your life that are really important you really should do, but you just haven't had time to do them? So get a backup strategy. Have somebody specifically assigned to do it. Give them specific responsibilities. You need to verify on a daily or weekly, however often you're doing your backups, that the backups are successful. Watch your jobs. If you're running these off jobs in SQL Server, make sure the jobs are completed successfully. I don't know how many times I've seen people get into problems with their data, and on investigation, when they go back, they find out that their backup jobs have been failing for over a month. So they're now a month out from good data, and that's just not acceptable for most companies. So somebody needs to verify that the backups are taking place, that they are at least reporting successful. Then the last one and the biggest one is test a restore. A backup is worthless on tape if you can't make it show up on the server and the data become live and come online. Okay, so you want to get in a non-volatile, non-pressure environment, take one of your backups and restore that to a test database server. Make sure that you can get back to that data and make it work. Everything else is a waste of time. You can have a strategy, specific person, on and on. You can verify the backups, but if you never restore one of these from the backup to an actual working condition, you don't know what you have. Again, Something else that always happens, that when you go through a test, you always find that it takes you longer than what you thought. There's something you didn't think about. There's something you didn't have. You don't have enough room. All, just all kinds of situations. So make sure that you have a backup strategy. My strongest recommendation is that you, your supervisor, sit down and go through this. There's a lot more goes into this. We'll talk about it as we go through these videos. How are you going to back up, full backups, differentials, on and on and on. Make sure there's a written strategy. Somebody's responsible for it. Have somebody else have the responsibility of checking up on the person doing these, making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Keep in mind, this is one of the reasons that DBAs make more money than the average IT worker, because you're dealing with the lifeblood of the company. And don't play with these backups. They will get you fired faster than anything else. So with that in mind, I hope I've scared you sufficiently. Let's go on and let's start to take a look at the various pieces and parts that you need to be concerned with with doing SQL Server 2005 backups.